This is a CW Spiral, a podcast run by two Barchies and a Bughead. We're your hosts, Sabrina Reed, Michael Patterson, and Reed Gowden, bringing you history about the network, the latest news, and in-depth spoiler-filled discussions of some of our favorite shows on the CW. Okay, so we were supposed to be on our mid-season hiatus, and the CW ruined those plans because they canceled Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman, and we're bereft, we're lost, confused, angry, all the above. Michael, how are you doing? I don't know. Uh, To give you an idea of just like how unplanned all of this is, I have no notes because I've been like going over the same thoughts in my head for the last few days. And like what I want to say is the same. How I want to say it has changed many, many times. Um, We were worried we'd get here, but we didn't think it would happen. And yet here we are. And I don't know, I have lots to say and we'll get into that. But like, first thoughts not in a good place not happy with the cw and i they, for a t- network that loves hiatuses it didn't respect ours but um <laughs> what can you say i don't know i, I don't know read how you do i feel so naive because even though all the fans were tweeting michael you were tweeting about batwoman and legends like every day as you should have been and as you should be now but i didn't expect this at all i didn't see it coming i wasn't worried about these two particular shows and then (laughs) here we are it's like upsetting i feel like as the disrespect of dropping it on a friday when the east coast has closed for business and the west coast is about to close for business in like what uh, three hours like i was just like really so good and so no one can get a comment no one can get a line no one can get anything it's just the showrunners dropping the news yeah, that part really surprises me. Although I feel like maybe for the fans, you'd rather hear it from the showrunner, but then to not hear anything from the CW, no reason, no closure, no explanation, just like drop it. And they're, are they in a bunker hiding? Probably they should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like they kind of just dropped the news and I've ever since gone like, no, we didn't do that. Let's move on. And I don't know. I I don't know whether to talk about it personally or professionally because the uh, the statements line up but how I deliver them won't and like not to get all sports analytical because I'm not a sports person but like to put this in perspective of like how groundbreaking this is it's like some sort of like championship bout where the champion is the first one eliminated because now it makes it like the dynamic shift at what, however this ends there's going to be a new champion or whatnot legends of tomorrow and batwoman were the front runners of all the unrenewed shows it was the dead certs it was yeah that's going to happen it's just a case of when like they've taken that out of the equation and now for a cw fan and maybe didn't watch those shows that makes things quite exciting because literally it could go either way and it maybe shows that were in jeopardy beforehand had aren't in quite as much jeopardy now that those two front runners are no longer in the way maybe they're willing to take a chance on another show but on the other hand if they're willing to call probably the most popular of their unrenewed shows what does that mean for the less popular ones are they in even more danger so it's been a very confusing time and i feel like this decision has made it all the more confusing personally i think it's a terrible idea i'm hurt by their decision to do that particularly with legends of tomorrow because it's an ogr over a show you you people get invested in these characters over the years sarah lance started on arrow for goodness sake in its second season and so she was probably the longest serving Arrowverse character to just call that character and her story just like that with no closure, no like uh, respect to the fans who, who, who got invested in the Arrowverse from the very beginning. It, it's awful. And I know, I know it's desperate times called for desperate measures and all that, but like how hard would it have been to give a successful series one final season or one two hour movie? Like the CW may never have been profitable as a network, but they were making plenty of profits. Like they could definitely have set aside a budget for that. So it's terrible what they've done. And I don't want to sugarcoat it. I think it's a horrible idea. I, as far as both shows goes, narrative wise, I can, Batwoman is easier to get over because the uh, fact that the story wrapped up, but that doesn't make it easier for me to get over. I wanted many more seasons of that show. Javicia Leslie deserved many more seasons of that show. So, yeah, I, I, it's it's 
it shocked me. At the same time, it was like, oh, your greatest fear is about this uncertainty has come to pass. So they were definitely there. I, I definitely consider this happening. But I thought that like right would prevail in the end. And I, I'm annoyed that it didn't. I feel the same way. Like, as you know, I don't watch Legends of Tomorrow, but it was always that show that like you knew was going to go with the rest of them. It's the outlier in terms of of. I want to say storytelling because it's so different from um, the rest of the Arrowverse. But even with the hashtag Renew Legends of Tomorrow campaigning, I just assumed that it would move forward. And I assumed that Batwoman would move forward too, that we were only like in a bit of a limbo because the CW is trying to figure itself out and where they wanted to place new shows, not that they were trying to figure out whether or not they wanted to completely dead the Arrowverse. It's so weird that we just did a a podcast about the multiverse of the Arrowverse, and now the Arrowverse is basically dead. And I know some people online are talking about how it's not dead because, you know, we have Superman and Lois, but it's adjacent to the Arrowverse. They haven't even really acknowledged it explicitly on the series yet, and they're not doing it until the finale of season two, and we don't even know what that is going to look like. For all we know, we might be living in the Superverse right now. Or we could just be doing um, DC TV on CW and some shows will connect and some shows won't. And that'll just be uh, our future. And in some ways, I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with the way that it was done. Um, We've had the errors for a very long time. The shows deserve to have the respect of final seasoning. I just don't see why you wouldn't do that. I get we're in a new era of the CW and we're going to continue to be that way as, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery becomes a whole thing and they they figure out what they want to do with all their shows and that uh, the CW is being sold to who we don't know. Again, Nexstar is the front runner. No one else has been named. We don't know if Nexstar had a hand in these decisions or not, or if we're just keeping things quiet um, until the sale, is, the sale is finished. But I kind of, as a fan, I don't really care about the reasoning, like, because you get really emotional about it. It's like, okay, fine, we're, we're moving on. We're moving past the Arrowverse. That doesn't really mean that you needed to cancel Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman. It just doesn't. And, but like professionally, I'm like, okay, what does this mean going forward with the network? And it's hard to set, like you mentioned, Michael, your personal feelings aside to be professional about a business decision that was made uh, because it's never just TV like ever, especially when it comes to veteran shows. So does that mean that fans of any CW show, like you have to be like other broadcast television networks, right? Be in fear. Like, is that, because it didn't used to be that way. And now I'm like, "Mm, maybe we should all sort of swallow this pill and realize that the CW could be coming with its ax for a whole bunch of other shows as we move forward into this new era. Mm -hmm. And it's even weirder to think about how for so many years the CW just had, like had us in the palm of their hand because they would announce all these renewals at once and we never really as you said lived in fear and now it feels like the floodgates have opened and they're just like and we don't know how or why or how long this will last or what we should be worried about it's just crazy that they would they would cancel a show that's been on for seven years and also the fact that they hadn't canceled a show that had, is it less than four seasons in almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. So to, to cancel Batwoman after three is kind of crazy. And it, it's, it feels like we're in a new era that we weren't expecting, but we were kind of like, oh, it could happen. And now that it's happened, I don't know. I feel like that meme with all the like numbers around my face. Cause I'm like, <laughs> where, do we, where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the thing that kind of bothers me is that the CW was never like the other networks. It, you always had that safety net, like those blanket renewals and that's it. It's like only, only when you were watching an show on another network, did you suddenly start having these cancellation fairs? But it feels kind of like the CW has kind of like evolved overnight into the opposite because even on one of the major networks, you, it's rare that you'd hear a show with seven seasons getting cancelled, like off the bat and maybe final season at. But like that's such a rarity in today's day and age to hear something like that because if something's had seven seasons behind it, ne- never mind a whole franchise, it's got staying power. So even the bigger networks tend to respect 
that so much to at least give it one more season. Not all the time, but like you don't hear of a show with seven seasons getting cancelled anymore in today's day and age, not at least without some kind of wrap up. So the fact that the CW went from being so like liberal and open minded and keeping its veterans around, just calling them with the click of a finger at not even a statement. It definitely suggests we're in this new era that we've been talking about for weeks and worry that it would come. But from a superhero standpoint, and I tweeted about this over the weekend, and it seems a lot of people feel the same way. Superhero shows don't work on network TV outside of the CW. I've said that for years because at the end of the day, the superhero franchise, regardless of it's DC or Marvel, is the most popular franchise in the world. And that can't be decided by on the night viewing figures in one country. These are globally popular franchises. And all you need to do is look at Supergirl, for example. It started on CBS with 13 million viewers, but by the end of its first season, it had fallen to six. And you know, rightly, if it had stuck around on CBS for longer, it would have continued to free fall because people just, the whole procedural network TV thing, Thing doesn't always work with a superhero show and because the budget's so big they can't invest that amount of money for declining viewers which is why it was safer that it would move to the cw after that aside from maybe marvel's agent of shield which again nbc have a close relationship with disney so like that was obvious why it was kept around no other superhero show has ever really worked on network tv in today's day and age so my concern with the cw starting to cancel their shows now means that maybe superhero tv won't work at all and that's not a world I want to live in because the Flash has kept around since it's a veteran. Superman always has been kept around since it's performing very, very well. We do have Naomi still, which is fate is uncertain. Stargirl, I think, will get at least one more season. And then you have Gotham Knights to add to the fray and maybe just as you. But it's just such an eclectic lineup compared to what the Arrowverse used to be. But you, you knew what you were getting going into it. And I'm not sure all those, sh- those like random kind of shows would have the same kind of drawing power. And aside from that, they're not going to have those ratings forever. So those viewing figures will continue to decline. So in five years from now, if a if a franchise strong or strong franchise performer isn't performing as strong, will the CW start clicking its fingers and canceling those? Will the Flash get canceled next year? Will Superman and Lois get canceled the year after that? I don't want to live in a world where superhero TV is not a network thing anymore. And I don't want network TV or networks to be able to decide the fate of globally popular franchises. It bothers me because we've said before, people in my country or other countries know what Legends of Tomorrow is, even though it's a US TV series. But there are hugely popular US procedurals that draw 9 and 10 million viewers in the States, and not a single person outside of the States know what they are. So I don't like the fact that these globally successful franchises can be judged on their performance on one night and then that's it, and then they're gone forever. That's a very archaic thing to me, and I don't like that we're heading back in that direction. It's frustrating, and it's a little unsettling. I feel like Superman and Lois is going to be fine, simply because it's a Superman show, but it does make you wonder whether or not, like, if we're going to have superhero television on the CW, if three seasons is about all you can possibly guarantee. Now, granted, I do understand that many television shows outside of procedurals are sort of getting boxed in to about four to five seasons. Like we're not really, the era of um, like season 10, season eight, season nine, season 10 is kind of ending um, hard <laughs> for mm-hmm. a lot for a lot of shows. Um, and I'm, I'm in some ways I'm fine with that, but I don't want to be living on the, the precipice of, should I be invested in this superhero show on CW? Um, if the CW is now gonna become like X and everything, if it's not getting a certain amount of live viewing draws. Now, this also means that we are, not, we are ignoring their streaming arm. Perhaps when they get sold, their streaming arm will become um, stronger. And so therefore they will actually take into account next day streaming. That's not just international, but also is through their website. And so you could actually potentially be able to push for a show's renewal through the CW app or CWTV.com in a much more, not organic, but powerful, impactful way than you can now. Because one, I'm not sure how many people know the CW app exists. Two, um, because it has ads or because it just people don't really engage with that app they're waiting until the shows land on their streaming homes, whether that's Netflix or HBO Max. So if we're not necessarily going to be doing that and there will be a heavy, heavy push for the CW app, perhaps there isn't anything to fear. People know, hey, if I miss it live, I can just watch it on the CW app and the streaming day numbers will boost the show that I'm really, really excited for and want to pay attention to. But 
even when we're talking about numbers, and I hate saying this because like, I just want to be a fan. I don't want to like, have the business head. And if we we're talking about numbers, what about the representation? <laughs> like the CW has been leading the charge, um, it seems, uh, when it comes to shows that are led by people from marginalized identities, whether that's um, race-based or in, I'm going to say sexual orientation. I was going to say gender identity, but there hasn't been a trans lead of a show yet, so I can't say that. Um, but they, <laughs> Batwoman had a Black lesbian lead. Legends of Tomorrow had a lesbian lead um, who was in a romance. Well, she has a wife, and they had a child that was coming. Like you're removing that representation from the CW, and it's not actually going to be replaced. I mean, Wildmore just started on Batwoman as far as being in, 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 a, in a relationship and a romance moving forward, and people were very, very excited to see Sophie and Ryan figure out what the next direction of their relationship was going to be, even though it was the tentative start of it. So as far as I'm aware, there aren't any other shows led by women who are also sapphic on the CW superhero television or otherwise, correct? I think that is correct, yes. Um, I'm trying to think all the shows are going through my head at once and no, none are sticking out. Um, but no, I agree totally with what you're saying because it's the Arrowverse was kind of this like unusual, eclectic, like it's so hard to see everybody represented on screen in any show, let alone franchise. And the, it felt like there was the Arrowverse had all walks of life in it. And that was just wonderful to say. And it's Legends of Tomorrow in particular. I keep going back to this because as the show went on, it got more, even more diverse. It, it, there was more representation in it. And if somebody came to me, it was like, does the Arrowverse of this kind of character, that kind of character, you could always say, oh yeah, there's one of those in Legends of Tomorrow. Like it, it was always great to say that Legends of Tomorrow represented everyone. And it would, as far as representation goes, there are, there are areas the Arrowverse could have done better on. I absolutely agree with that. But if, if the franchise could have done it better, Legends of Tomorrow was already doing it. It kind of became its own little thing aside from the Arrowverse. And like you said, uh, by lead with the wife, um, uh, the child on the way, um, they had their first asexual character in, it in just this season within the last six or seven episodes. And they had John Constantine, who was, a bi I think, was the only male bisexual character in the Arrowverse, I think. Um, so it did everything and it represented everybody. It was a voice for the people. It was always the little show that could. So again to cut that and that that's one of the main reasons why cutting it without giving them the conclusion they deserve is horrendous they've always been our little like band of outcasts our little band of misfits don't call them heroes call them legends that was literally the tagline and every, legends never die and i know that's that's the tagline that's getting a lot of people through through this cancellation but this show existed when supergirl was in its prime this show existed when arrow and the flash were in their prime Arrow and Supergirl got to bow out as they deserve. We know rightly the Flash is going to get to bow out as it deserves. Why does the little show that could, why does the show that consistently divide expectations not be treated with the same respect? Why is the show that represented everybody not allowed the chance to end happily or end even in a goofy fashion? And I know there's there's a charm to the fact that Legends of Tomorrow ended on a cliffhanger because that sh show has kind of got such a reset factor that is like, Yes, that problem solved. Here we go again. But I don't like the cliffhanger they left it with. The legends deserve better than that. Um, the representation the show gives us deserves better than that. And I just you could list off so many reasons why both shows deserve better than that. And I'd be here all day if I did it. So I'm going to cut it short now. But I don't want it. I, I don't want the analytical aspect of this, the, 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 the decisions on what this means for the rest of the shows to overshadow what it means for shows that deserved more than that because at the end of the day these two shows deserve far more respect than they were treated and i'm sick of a network like the cw that advised to represent everyone calling these shows and disrespecting them because they've been disrespected for a long time before they were called and that's not good enough those shows deserve better than that the cast the crew and the fans deserve better than that here's the thing consumers hold a grudge right like Mm -hmm. We see it all the time. Like once you break that trust, we see what's happening with Netflix right now. They cancel shows, fans get angry. They raise their prices, fans get angry. And we're not paying a subscription for the CW, but when they're canceling 
not just our favorite shows, the shows with inclusivity, we see ourselves in them. And then when you cancel that, it kind of feels personal. It's like, okay, then I don't belong here. If you're, if you happen to be a black lesbian who felt seen Mm -hmm. by a Batwoman and they cancel that show just out of nowhere, no explanation. It feels like, oh, okay. And I know that feel that can seem kind of like, is it that deep? But it can be for a lot of people. You see yourself on that screen. And once they just say like, nope, it's gone. You're like, okay, do I belong here? Should I stop watching your shows? You lose that trust in a, not just a network, a brand, a whole slate of programming. It's like, what's the point? What, why do I even bother anymore? That's very true. Because people, like I was one of, someone who turned on the TV because I saw Javicia Leslie as Batwoman. I'm like a, a black Batwoman. <laughs> I'm watching tonight. I will be there, right? For someone who was a black lesbian, she's like, wait, she's, she's here. She's here. She's arrived. I'm watching the television show or um, anybody who resonated with Sophie Moore's character. I think earlier I, I misspoke and said that um, Sarah was a lesbian, but she's bi. And um, oh, yeah. um, that storyline um, where they brought her orientation into the story, I remember how much the internet exploded, right? They were so excited and then even more excited when Avalanche became a thing and it grew and it it was I've seen the gifts they're so beautiful and Mm -hmm. very very cute um and to have that gone overnight and to be disrespected in the way that it was disrespected for fans for viewership that does make you turn on a network because it does make you think yes shows get canceled but when it's a show that you specifically identify with that cancellation hurts there are fans right now grieving. There are fans who had a trauma response to the cancellation because they feel like their their shows that represent them always get canceled. They're the ones always on the chopping block. Like, oh, of course, this is a marginalized identity. We have other shows largely led by white men. We're going to do them instead. And so sorry for your loss, but this show is now gone. And uh, there was a GLAAD report that was talking about how the issue with representation um, on television is that it's often not replaced. So like you, we have this golden era of, of identities, people in lead roles who you don't often get to see. And then their shows are, are, um, are taken off and then there is no replacement for them. I don't know what the CW is going to do in its future. I don't know if they will um, have woman led superhero shows that aren't you know led by teen characters. Um, in the future. I know Gotham Knights has a trans character. I know Gotham Knights has a bisexual character. They are, however, not leads. And the important, like the point of progress is to move beyond secondary characters. It's to get to lead characters. And granted, Tom Swift um, is going to be, as far as I'm aware, he's the first Black gay man to have a show on television. I think the first actually gay man to be a lead on the CW. Um, And that's great, but in this case, it's not a superhero show. So what are you going to do to replace that representation? Absolutely, and that's so frustrating because uh, it's important to say that nothing lasts forever. We know that every show will end at some point, but for these ones to be treated so disrespectfully, and. I didn't see it like this, but I can understand why a lot of people did. It took, it took me a minute before I saw it. I was like, oh, look, the Flash and Superman and Lois have been renewed. Oh, clearly, they're the more popular of the two. That's understandable. The other two will follow. And then the other two didn't follow. And it's hard not to look at it like that. As you said, Sabrina, the two shows led by uh, white males were the ones that were renewed. And then the ones renowned for the representation weren't. And it's not even that they weren't renewed. Final seasons would have been totally acceptable. But... There was no chance to prepare for their ending. There was no chance to prepare for what comes next. There was no chance to prepare for, okay, the CW brought this representation into our lives. How does it replace that when those shows end? They're just gone. And we know what Slate looks like. It's Slate doesn't look like it's going to make any effort to improve them and to replace them at least this year around. And that, that, there's a, there's a, like a flatness or a disappointment to that entire thing. Of course, it's outrageous to begin with canceling shows like that without giving them the sense off the deserve but there's also just like a a, a hush a, a like eerie flat hush the fact that okay this is how it is now and 
we're just going to move on and pretend it never happened. And particularly for a show that ran seven years that was dripping in representation, representation that the world needed, representation that people identified with. And now it's just gone. It's like trying to grieve a loss. And I can understand why people feel like that because it takes a lot to see yourself represented on screen and to not even get, not even get used to the fact that it's, it's gone or it's going to go away. It's just gone. And that's it. And now what they're supposed to like accept these new superhero shows that are more maybe in the vein of your traditional superhero series is when the network already has plenty of those to begin with. It's rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. And I have no problem saying I'm one of them. I like to sugarcoat things, but I'm not sugarcoating this. It was a horrible idea. It was a terrible idea. And it was disrespectful to everyone who loved those shows. And they deserve better than that. I think if we, if we, this episode has a tagline, I think that's what we're going to have to go with. I'm tired of saying it, but I'll never stop saying it because they really deserved a lot more respect than the network, the network that created them, gave them. And that's a horrible thing to think about. It is. It is. Especially when you think of it's broadcast television, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are television shows that um, usually on streaming where um, the lead is from a a marginalized group. Um, And it's beautiful and it's wonderful and we're very, very excited about it. But there is something still about having a broadcast television show, something that's not behind a paywall or not on um, a channel that you have to like pay extra for uh, to be able to see it on one of the the big networks. That's important. Um, And it's groundbreaking and it makes people feel seen. It makes people feel like their stories are being told and the diversity of their experiences. Because just because you belong to one community doesn't mean that the that your experience is so, it, there's similarities, but it's just nice to have a range of storytelling. And when these shows go off one by one by one, it just feels like it kind of makes you feel a little crazy, right? Because you know what the world looks like outside of the television screen. And yet the television screen is telling you that the world looks this one way. And there's this one perspective. Um, and there is a danger, there's a danger to that. Uh, I think anyone who's saying that fans are overreacting most likely has never not seen themselves in a storyline in television. And in some ways that's okay. I mean, you, you, you are born into the community, into the life that you're born into. It is what it is. But do not speak for people who do not often get to see themselves um, in storytelling. Just sit this one out, grab a seat and listen <laughs> like, and learn. <laughs> Uh, because there's a reason why fans react the way that they react when certain shows are canceled. And a lot of it is trigger-based, it's trauma-based, it's spending years upon years upon years of watching television and not feeling like your storylines are given the worth that they deserve because there's value in all walks of life. And that's not often treated that way on television. What I want to know is how long did the CW know that they were going to cancel these shows? I'm tired of being told or being under the impression that these decision, decisions just happened quickly. Like mm-hmm. they just did it. Like, no, no, you didn't. I'm not naive. I'm not naive in this part. I was naive about this happening, but like, I know that these discussions have been in place for a long time. So when did you know? Did you know while they were still filming? Could you have given the team like, hey, heads up, we're probably not gonna renew this show. So, you know, work toward that ending. I, as Michael kept saying, I think that the fans deserved more from the endings of these shows. And if there was ever an inkling that they thought that they were going to cancel these shows, they should have prepped them. I'm so sick of television, especially for long running shows like Legends of Tomorrow is in season seven. And you're not going to be like, hey, BTW, season eight's not going to happen. Maybe, you know, wrap it up. Like, how do you not? give one of your key shows respect or time i it's just the more i hear you guys talking about it the more the angrier i get because it's like how does how do you get to this point where you just pull the plug on two huge shows and not expect that the fans are going to be ready to tear you down how does that how does that what's not clicking like how do you not do that Right, like this, this, the decisions can't did not it did not happen on Friday. No, mm. it didn't. Like it happened way before then, and I don't know why they couldn't have 
it's just it's sickening <laughs> well it makes you wonder because the um the writers rooms for both shows were, were pushing people to stream so it's like okay was the discussion in the room that you needed to hit a certain mark on the streaming platforms and if you did that we maybe not guarantee a renewal but you should be safe right or we will have more discussions about the but even process. that sucks that, it that sucks, sucks a lot. to me that's terrible so maybe they did get a heads up, but it was like a, ugh, I don't know, that makes me feel weird that they were like, you need to hit this number, you're gone. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially because then it makes it seem, it was it always that they had to hit a certain streaming um, viewership or did you just want your numbers up on your platform and that's what you told them. But because the CW is silent right now, which I expected, they released the news on a Friday. Like I, either they're gonna say something this week or they're gonna say something next week. Um, maybe not up front, but they're gonna have to talk about it because a journalist is gonna ask about it. Like there is no universe where the CW is gonna be able to cancel these two shows and just move on business as usual. Not Unfortunately, these two. nothing that they say will will make it better. No, they're just gonna be like, true. oh, numbers, digital strategy. It's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I still want it's, answers though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just not going to be good. <laughs> I'm waiting on the inevitable. Oh, we can tie up X person's story on the flash. And I'm like, that's not good enough. You know what I mean? Like they're always going to be a secondary character on somebody else's show when the D DVD and Blu-ray box sets are released or when it is added to Netflix, that, that conclusion is not going to be included with it because it takes place on another show. People have invested time and money and like beliefs and hopes in these characters. They, 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 they need more than that. They want more than that. And it's just, you're right, they're going to come back with the typical business end of the conversation strategy and shows that have like broke down barriers and uh, startup movements and shortened gaps and broke glass ceilings. They deserve more than that. And, but like, it's going to be a footnote and a let's get excited for next year's slate. And I don't like that. It leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. I don't like it either. And I feel like they are gonna try to push past it, like it's okay. And it's not, it's like, first of all, Walker Independence, Gotham Knights, and uh, uh, the Winchesters, like even if all three of them move forward, which means also another show is gonna have to get canceled if they're all moving forward in the fall, um, which again, I think that'll be 4,400, the lone show. I mean, if 4,400 comes out of this unscraped and gets a season two and they were quiet about um, that through the CW, there's gonna be fighting on the web. <laughs> it just truly, <laughs> truly is. It's gonna get real ugly on Twitter real Gloves fast. Gloves off. <laughs> <laughs> and not to say that like fans of that show or of course the cast and crew shouldn't be excited for a season two if they get it. They yeah. definitely should be, but I'm just saying with as it loud It seems as, unlikely. Like yeah. the writing, it's on that wall and we're reading it. And then right. <laughs> if, if they were like, JK, it's actually not on the wall and it's like another show that's going to go down and 4400 is going forward. I just... Guys, I'm people, scared. He, well, for Dynasty, Ma I don't forget Michael, it. Michael lost his favorite show. Sabrina lost her favorite show. Things happen in threes, guys. Mm. I'm battening down the hatches, emotionally preparing. I'm wearing my Dynasty shirt right now for vibes. If you can't, <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube, I'm wearing my Dynasty shirt. <laughs> um, I, I'm just emotionally preparing. Like anything can happen now. Like this is totally like shattered the bubble in my mind of like comfort. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to expect everything to be canceled so that my expectations are in the pits of hell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's like. That's it. Uh, and it's that like analogy earlier that I used. It's like we all expected something. And now the game has been completely changed in the opening moments of the match. And like it could go anywhere now. It's probably best to expect cancellations across the board because that isn't going to happen. So at least that way it'll be some kind of pleasant surprise. But to have the front runners taken out of the game so quickly, it's definitely, it's changed the playing field. And so it doesn't mean the shows are safer or, safer or doesn't mean they're more at risk. I don't know. It's a very unusual time. And if I didn't have such personal stakes in it, I would say it's a very exciting time. But it's not a very exciting time. It's a horrible time. Um, but like, yeah, aside from my Save Legends of Tomorrow and Save Batwoman movements that I'm happily jumping on board, like our services are yours when it comes to Renew Dynasty because I don't care about any. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, obviously hashtag Renew insert show here 
does not work. So yeah. I don't know, like, what do we do? Obviously, we're at the mercy of this network that's in clear and utter chaos. So I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know either. Look, I'm hashtagging Save Legends of Tomorrow, hashtagging Save Batwoman, hashtag HBO Max Save Batwoman, hashtag HBO Max Save Legends of Tomorrow. I'm like, because you, there is, either there's a fight or you give up. And it hasn't been even a week yet. And so I am not ready to give up. I want a TV movie for Legends of Tomorrow. I want another season for Batwoman um, on HBO Max. I just, that is what I want. And I'm willing to fight for it until like, they may not tell us no, but until it looks clear that, you know, the fight needs to be given up. I'm just be out here with my threads, my tweet threads, like um, pushing the movement. Also hashtag renew all American homecoming. Granted, I think it's safe only because mm -hmm. all American is very popular. Um, and I just don't see can like you just franchised it out and you spent a lot of money. Just give us a season two. Um, but I don't know, hashtag we need a dynasty. I was just, just like, just <laughs> hashtag everything. It just feels when you, when you feel like you don't have anything else that you can do, a lot of the time you throw your weight into even the, like the little things, even if it's just to give you that um, enthusiasm to keep pushing. So if you're fighting, we're fighting with you. Just know that. Yeah. And uh, we feel everything the fans have felt. I have gotten so many responses of people like, it's gone, let it go, get over it. And I'm like, come on now. Um, again, that's just an example of people who don't see themselves in those shows. And that's all right. I don't expect everyone to see themselves in those shows. But I said to you guys on Friday night that uh, Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman, I'm not going to uh, down that. Both shows incredibly mean an awful lot to me. Um, but Legends of Tomorrow was with me for longer, which is why I thought the CW would respect it more. And I said to you a few weeks ago, Sabrina, I don't think I'd be in this line of work. I don't think I'd be co-hosting this podcast if it wasn't for those shows, this universe that got me here. Always been a DC fan, always been a Marvel fan, but it was the Arrowverse that gave me that drive to do everything I am doing right now. And to to not this is this goes beyond imagining a world without the shared universe it just i don't want to imagine a world without those shows in it right now especially because i know how important they are to everyone else so yes save batwoman save legends of tomorrow i will fight for these however long it takes because they at least deserve one hour of a conclusion and uh, uh it's on brand now they deserve so much better so i'll go with it one more time um yeah it was a hard pill to swallow it was one I didn't totally not expect but it was I it was one I was hoping we wouldn't have to but yeah save Batwoman save Legends of Tomorrow because they deserve so much better they do and if our wildest dreams don't happen I guess we'll be putting on our cowboy hats and boots and going into the walker verse <laughs> <laughs> can't wait and uh, only the 18th version though <laughs> like, and I guess Gotham Knights Winchester's is to be decided i'm truly not trying to be bitter about these pilots i want everyone to succeed i am a little bitter about these pilots we've gone on an emotional roller coaster with them and we're on a downswing well i think we have to admit that much <laughs> yeah i'm willing to admit them like because mm, i saw that like they just everyone knows they have all wrapped filming mm -hmm. uh and it is like like our deadline i'm just gonna say deadline i was gonna say something else but we're gonna cap that <laughs> um uh, Deadline has said that, that most likely if Gotham Knights is moving forward, we will get a scissor reel about it at the upfronts because we're also supposed to be getting the fall calendar, um, which makes me think Gotham Knights is basically greenlit quietly, in which no one would be surprised. Walker Independence is probably going to go forward. The Winchesters got described as being the strongest attempt at a supernatural spinoff to date, which makes me feel like it's not going anywhere. It's no, I can't forward. tell if that's a compliment or shade <laughs> <laughs> i think the it's strongest shade. attempt <laughs> it's like attempt that means they're like cute it was yeah. lovely you're not you're going doing, forward you're doing amazing sweetie <laughs> <laughs> better luck next time <laughs> that's the worst pilot i've ever seen <laughs> oh god real regina george vibes there <laughs> yeah it felt like that it felt like that um i guess to wrap this up um our hearts are broken uh, but we're still fighting um if you are sad or you're having a hard time watching that woman or legends of tomorrow we understand uh give yourself time give yourself grace when you have so much of your heart 
in a show, it can be really hard to to let it go. And no one is saying you have to let it go now, continue to be in the fight um, because you never know what is going to happen. But if it comes down to, you know, fighting or your mental health, choose your mental health. Perfectly said. So um, that is it for our special heartbreaking pod about the Batwoman and Save Legends of Tomorrow cancellations. We are The Spiral. I'm Sabrina. I'm Michael. And I'm Reed. We'll be back on May 16th for more ranting and possibly some more Riverdale. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, y'all.